Hi everyone, and welcome to Aranis' Map Making Guide, Episode 1. I'm Aranis, and this video will serve as a short introduction to my series on map making and to Inkscape in general. The first thing you'll need to do to create a map is to make a scalable vector graphic of your map, otherwise known as an SVG. This is basically an image of your map created using some sort of vector graphics software. SVGs are the reason you can zoom in on maps without them getting blurry. The software I use to create my SVGs is called Inkscape. It's free and I'll link it in the video description. Once you've installed Inkscape, open it up and it should look something like this. Before you do anything, you'll want to set the size of your map. So go to File, Document Properties. Um, make sure to set the display unit to pixels and the scale to 1. You'll also want to set the size of your map. Warzone will reject your map if it's too large or too small. Uh, basically, the map size will determine how large the army numbers will appear, so make sure to do this properly. If your map is average size, it's probably best to start with around 900 by 900 pixels, and then adjust it later. So you can click off of that now. This here is your page border. You'll want to create your whole map within these borders. For the rest of this video, I'll be going over various features of Inkscape to familiarize you with the program. First, let's go over some essential shortcuts, which can save you a lot of time working with Inkscape. To pan around the page, you can hold down the mouse wheel and drag. Alternatively, you can scroll the mouse wheel to go up or down on the canvas, and scroll while holding shift to move side to side. To zoom in or out of the canvas, hold control and roll up or down the mouse wheel. Alternatively, you can press the plus or minus buttons on your keyboard. To select an object, left click it. To select multiple objects, hold shift while clicking or drag over them like this. To move an object, drag it around, or you can hold control to drag it completely vertically or completely horizontally. If you want to flip it vertically or horizontally, click these buttons. To select an object behind another object, hold Alt while clicking. To select objects in a line, hold Alt while dragging. If you want to copy an object, use control C, and to paste it, use control V. You can also use Ctrl D to duplicate it. Use these buttons to undo and redo actions, or use Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y on your keyboard. If you want to move an object forward or backward, use these buttons. If you want to create copies of an object while dragging it, you can drag it around and press space to create copies. If you want to group objects, select them all and do Object Group, or press Ctrl G on your keyboard. If you want to ungroup objects, do Object Ungroup. Finally, you can find the keyboard shortcuts for most features of Inkscape by hovering over them. So now that you're a little more familiar with navigating Inkscape, let's talk about actually making stuff with it. The most fundamental component of an SVG is a path. A path is essentially any shape made up of nodes, which we'll get to in a little bit. Your entire SVG is going to be composed of paths, so it's important to understand how to create and manipulate them. To create a path, you can either use the Bezier pen or the freehand tool. I prefer the Bezier pen and will be using it for the purposes of this tutorial. So to select the Bezier pen, you can click on this icon or use B on your keyboard. Once you have the Bezier pen selected, click on the canvas to place nodes and then click on the starting box to close your shape. So now that you have a path, let's manipulate its nodes. Select the nodes tool by clicking this button or N on your keyboard. So these are the nodes of your path, and you can drag them around like this. If you want to add nodes, you can double click anywhere and then it'll create a node. If you want to add nodes between other nodes, you can select the two nodes and click on this button here. If you want to delete nodes, you can select the node and click delete or backspace on your keyboard, although this will create a rounded shape for your path. If you want to create a rounded shape manually, you can select any part in between nodes and drag it around like this. You can also manipulate your path with the select tool. Use these arrows to stretch or squash it, these arrows to scale it, or you can click on the path and use these arrows to add perspective to it or rotate it. If you want to keep an object's aspect ratio intact while scaling it, hold control. To add color to your path, Select it and click on one of these colors down here, or you can open up the Fill and Stroke menu. Sorry, I actually have a lot of other menus selected already. Let me close all those. 
So this is the fill and stroke menu. You can also um, adjust the stroke color of your path by holding shift while clicking on one of these colors down here. You can't actually see the stroke color because the stroke is very small. So you can increase the stroke size using this menu here in stroke style. Let's set it to 30 pixels. So now you can actually see the stroke. If you want to change the stroke paint, you can also use this menu here. And if you want to change the fill color and add your custom color, you can use this menu here. So the stroke is basically the outline of your object. But if you use the Bezier pen, sorry, and you didn't close your shape, you'll also have created a stroke. This is a stroke. And so strokes will not show up in Warzone. So if you want them to show up in Warzone, you're going to have to do path, stroke to path, and that will convert your stroke to a path. So if I just grab the Bezier pen quickly and draw another stroke here. So you can see this is a path. This is a stroke. If you use the nodes tool to try and edit your stroke, you'll only have nodes like this. Whereas if you have a path such as this one, because we converted this to a path, you can actually edit it like this. So that's sort of the difference between a stroke and a path. Remember, paths will show up in Warzone, strokes will not. So we've looked at stroke to path, and now let's go over the rest of the functions in the path menu. So first, let me just duplicate this shape and change its color just so you can actually see what's going on. Let's make it yellow with a blue outline. So if you want to combine two shapes, um, overlap them like this, and then go to path union, and this will create one continuous shape. Uh, let's undo that. So um, path difference, basically if you have two overlapping shapes like this, you select them and you do path difference, it will use one shape to cut a hole in the other shape. So if we undo that, and we actually move this path up a layer, now we do the same function again, you'll see that it's the bottom path that remains. And basically, whichever path is underneath will be the path that remains and the path that gets the hole cut through it. So the next path function is intersection. So path intersection will basically keep the area between two paths that is overlapping. And let me undo that. Path exclusion will keep the area that does not overlap. Um, so path division, basically you can use one path to slice another path without actually getting rid of any part of it. So you can see now we have two identical paths. Not identical, but you get what I mean. And so you can also actually do this function with a stroke. So if we took this stroke from earlier and we brought it up and we edited its node so that it actually cuts through uh, this path here, and then we select the two paths, now we do path division. You can see that we cut along the stroke. So this is actually very useful when cutting territories, and we're going to get to that in a later video. So the next path function is cut path. And basically, cut path will do the same thing, except it will only keep the stroke. So if we do this again, you'll see that it will only keep the stroke, but it will still cut the stroke um, along uh, the stroke that was overlapping it. So the next path function, uh, what is it? Path combine will basically do the same thing as path union, except it will keep the internal nodes. So let's do path combine. And if you remember, path union created one continuous shape. Path combine keeps the internal nodes. And if we actually go to the nodes tool, you can see that we have a bunch of nodes inside of the shape. Whereas if we undo that and then we do path union and then we go to the nodes tool, you can see there's no nodes inside the shape. So that's what path combine does. Um, so the next path function would be break apart, which if we do path combine, and then we do we select this new path that we've created and we do path break apart, you can see it um, breaks it back into its original components based on the internal nodes. So this is also useful when creating territories, and again, we'll get to that in a later video. But the next path function is um, path inset. Okay, so path inset and outset. Uh, let me just undo that real quick. So path inset will basically, I don't know if you can see that, but it will make the shape slightly smaller. And path outset will make the shape slightly bigger. I wouldn't recommend doing this on complicated shapes uh, because if you, do, um, if you do it on a complicated shape, 
such as this, then it'll um, sort of mess up what the shape looks like if you do it enough times. <laughs> this isn't really working for my illustration, but you, you can see what I mean. It's adding some stuff that you wouldn't necessarily want. So only use that for simple shapes. Um, so dynamic offset and linked offset won't appear in war zones. So I'm not even going to cover them, and I never use them anyway. Path simplify is an interesting one. So I know I said that I don't use the freehand tool, but some people do use the freehand tool. And this is when pa um, path simplify is very useful. So if you use the freehand tool and you drag like this, let's just say that's my shape. Um, let me zoom in a little. You can see there's a lot of little ridges here. And so if I go to the nodes tool, you can see there's a ton of ridges. And so there's a ton of different nodes, I should say. And this will take up a lot of storage space. And Warzone has a very strict storage space limit of 2 megabytes. So if you're using the freehand tool, this can be a real problem. So to solve this problem, you can do path, simplify, and you can see it got rid of a bunch of the nodes, but it still kept the shape as best as it could. So that's sort of what path simplify does. It gets rid of nodes. Uh, warning, if you do that and you have a really complicated shape, it could mess up your shape, but that's just how it works. Uh, path reverse, again, I never use it, not going to cover it. Path effects and paste path effect and move path effect don't actually appear in Warzone. So that's all for the path menu. So other than strokes and paths, you'll also be working with objects a lot on Inkscape. Objects are basically special graphics, which Inkscape gives unique properties to. So let me just clear the screen a little bit. So one type of object is a rectangle. So if you click on the rectangle tool, you can use it to create rectangles or squares if you hold control while dragging. And so one special property that Inkscape gives to rectangles is this little feature here, which lets you round it off. So rectangles are a type of object. Objects do not show up in Warzone. If you want objects to show up in Warzone, you have to do path, object to path. And that just converted this thing to a path. If we go and look at the nodes, you can see now it's a path, whereas before we couldn't do that. So another type of object is the ellipse tool. Uh, you can use the ellipse tool to create ovals. I uh, don't know why mine looks like that, or ellipses like this. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is one special property that Inkscape gives to ellipses. I've never used it before, but you can use that if you like. And so the final type of object uh, in this menu, at least, that I use regularly is stars and pentagon. So this is a tool for doing that. Uh, you can just drag mines in pentagon mode. You can change it to star mode using this button here. So now if I dragged, it would create a star. And so let me select my pentagon and go back to this tool here. So you can increase the amount of corners and it's basically just, uh, sorry, mine is in star mode. So you increase the amount of corners, it will create a polygon with that many corners. So it's also just a polygon tool in general. So there actually is one more type of object that I do use when map making and it's the text tool. So you can click on it here, click where you want text to go. Mine's very small for some reason, um, but then if you type, it will create text. And so, uh, let me scale that up a little, hold control to do it with the same aspect ratio. So if you want to change the style of your text, uh, go to text, text and font, and that will open up the text and font menu. So here I can scroll through all of my different fonts. Um, here, let me just choose this one in bold and then click apply and that will change the size of the font. So if I go back and select the text tool, you can see up here that a bunch of features um, specific to text come up. So I can actually adjust the it's doing it very slowly, but I can adjust the spacing between letters. I can also adjust spacing between words, spacing between lines, all sorts of stuff with a text tool. So remember that text is an object and objects don't show up in Warzone. So if you want your text to show up in Warzone, you have to go to path, object to path. And again, if we click the nodes tool and click on our text, you can see it has a whole bunch of nodes. So text actually takes up a lot of space because it has a lot of nodes. So use your text sparingly. So next, I'm going to demonstrate how to use layers. So uh, let me just clear this off the screen. If you go to layer, layers, and let me just close this, that will open up the layers menu. You can see we only have one layer here, but usually when I'm making maps, I have a bunch of different layers because it allows me to organize my SVGs, which is especially useful when making complicated maps. So if you want to rename a layer, you can right click it and go to rename layer. We can call this one background. And then if you want to add another layer, uh, let's rename this one foreground. And so basically now we have two different layers. 
So we can add objects to different layers. I think all the objects are in the background layer because that was the original uh, layer. Uh, I'm saying layer a lot in these sentences. So uh, if you want to uh, move your object to a different layer, you can right click it, move to layer. Let's move it to foreground. So now you can see because foreground is above background, this object will appear above the other object. And so if we wanted to move this object as well to the foreground, let's say, now you can see it, it comes above this object. Uh, so you can, sorry, let's undo that. Let's move it right back to the other layer that it was at. So you can hide or show entire layers using these eye icons. So that will hide or show the entire layer. Uh, you can also lock a layer using the lock icons, and that will basically, see now I cannot select anything in that layer. So I can't select the hexagon, uh, which can be useful if the hexagon was the background for my map. So often I will lock the background layer for my map so that I can only select territories or whatever I want to select. So you can select everything in a layer by clicking edit, um, select all, and that will select everything in the current layer. So I'm currently selecting foreground, so it will select everything in foreground. Uh, if for whatever reason you want it to select everything that's not in a locked layer, you can click select all in all layers. So the final feature of Inkscape that I want to familiarize you with is the Align and Distribute menu. So go to Object, Align and Distribute. Um, let me just close the Layers menu so I can see it. So here's the Align and Distribute menu. I recommend this uh, should be set to Last Selected, otherwise it will give you some weird results. So this menu lets you align things and distribute things. So let me just make a few copies of this star. Uh, let me drag it around and press Space to create a few copies of it. This is just to illustrate uh, my point. So if you go and select all of the stars, uh, we can use this menu to align them in different ways. So let's say that I wanted to center them on the vertical axis. I click this button and it centered them all vertically. I think in this case it would make more sense to center them horizontally. And so now if I go to the distribute menu, now I can click something like this button, which will make horizontal gaps between objects equal. That basically just spaced everything out nicely. So that's sort of the align and distribute menu comes in a lot of handy when you want to make things perfectly aligned. So one more thing I do want to talk about is the snapping menu. So you have a bunch of options here, and these will enable, disable snapping, a bunch of different things. So let me first show you, if I'm dragging around this shape, for example, you can see that it'll snap these two nodes together. And so by default, you'll have the snapping menu on. If you ever want to uh, disable snapping, because it can be annoying sometimes, just click this button, and now it won't snap anymore. So one more thing, if you want to enable the dark mode like I have on, just do Edit, Preferences, Interface, Theme, and use Dark Theme. So that's about it for today's tutorial. I hope you learned something, and you might now be a little bit more comfortable working with Inkscape. So make sure to stick around. I'll be posting a few more follow-up videos to this in my map-making series. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.